Surprise, surprise, the Labour Party have once again lied to the British public, but this time they got caught by an independent watchdog, yet we are seeing no outrage from the mainstream media. What happened to the point of the media being there to hold a power to account? Whether it's the government or the opposition parties, just politicians in general, that went out of the window years ago. The Sky News types, the BBC types, Channel 4, ITV, all of them. Now we have independent media, we have new media, we have channels like this. We are able to expose the power, regardless of if it's right or left or up or down. So this is about the shadow chancellor, Rachel Reeves. Yes, Keir Starmer's number one right-hand woman. So she has uh, said a lot of, well, she's been talking nonsense for the past few months anyway, but uh, the Labour Party have received a lot of criticism recently because of a certain uh, social media posts and graphics uh, who have been slightly libelous, but I'm more concerned about actual fake news and misleading graphs and statistics. When you have Rachel Reeves tweeting this, after 13 years of the Tories, Britain's growth is on the floor. So I could agree with the sentiment. Absolutely, the growth has not been great, uh, although we just had a few years of good progress after the austerity days and then you had all the mess uh, with all the lockdown policies. And then she says, and his families that are paying the price. Again, I agree. She says Labour's mission <laughs> to secure the highest sustained growth in the G7 will make us all and uh, make all parts of Britain better off. Well, this is just an empty promise and knowing Labour policies, that's not going to happen. But that's not the problem of the tweet. The problem of that, with that post is that underneath those words, she posted this graphic. Under the Tories, the UK is the only G7 country with negative growth this year. Firstly, that's just not true. How do we know this? Because the image that you can see on the screen, and you got Japan, Canada, US, all of them, and the UK is like a minus 0.6% compared to the rest of them who are basically in a positive area. It, <laughs> it's not actually what the growth we had this year. It's IMF forecast for this year going forward. And considering we know what the IMF does, and the, the whole point of the, the elitist idiots at the IMF They've been failing at every forecast and predictions. The IMF said, if you vote to leave the EU, the whole of the Britain and as an island will just go away, will sink, and there will be a third world conflict and everything. None of that happened. Every single forecast they've had, even recently, the last few months, have been incorrect. But even if they were right, and I, we can see that the economy is in a mess, it's not in a good situation, thanks to this government. But you can't use that figure to pretend that this is the existing lack of growth. It's absolutely a lie. You can't do that. It's not to defend the government's record. It's just you cannot spread the fake news. Luckily this time, UK Statistics Authority, who have been very good on top of, like, been on top of a lot of things recently, uh, came out and slammed the Labour Party and the Sh Shadow Chancellor and gave him a warning uh, to have more discipline to be more truthful to the public. So thank God, that's that's quite rare. So a letter from Sir Robert uh, Cho uh, it said, uh, well, sent it to Rachel Reeve saying, I'm writing to you, obviously is the chair of the UK Statistics Authority, about a graphic posted on your Twitter timeline on the 14th of March, showing that the GDP growth rates forecast for each of the G7 countries by the International Monetary Fund in January. It is quite interesting because obviously in March we did talk about this graphic on this channel, uh, but the latest update is that now we have some sort of backlash. It took him over a month, but yeah, at least it's happening. Uh, so Robert says that an important role of data visualization is to aid understanding of the data. But in this case, <laughs> the graph is misleading as neither the piles of coins nor the flag displays, <laughs> a flag display, uh, the growth forecast to scale, as shown in the <laughs> annotated version of this letter. In this letter, that said, it remains the case, uh, though, that the UK was the only country for which negative growth was forecast. The key word is forecast, not actual real-time figures. So 
the problem with the, with the graph is not only it's misleading because it makes you think this is exactly what we, we already have right now, which is not true. But as uh, Robert also points out, there's also other problems with the graph, with the way the graphic has been made with the, with the flags and the coins and everything else. It makes you, it's, it's literally like a liberal Democrats leaflet where they say the Lib Dems are winning here. The, the bar is like this much and then the other parties are here. <laughs> but the difference is like 2%. It's, it, it cannot continue like this in British politics because with, with the rise of new media and independent reporting, we can now catch you out, even if the mainstream media refuse to do so. So again, you can see um, the, when you look at the actual, this is what Sir Robert actually posted on their website when they, they compared the, the coins and the flags. So <laughs> you can see Japan is 1.8%. So the coins show is 1.8%. But Canada is 1.5%. But then they brought it down but they use the flag of Canada to show it's reached 1.5. It, it makes no sense. With the UK, they use the top of the flag. It's the beginning of one coin. I think I believe it's one coin and maybe a couple of coins. You can't do this. <laughs> well, again, this is just semantics when it comes to the actual flag and the coins. The issue, the main issue is that they're using a forecast figures to pretend that these are real figures. Stop doing that. It's a mess. People can see. People are not stupid. They've been calling you out for the past decade or so since the whole bubble burst after Tony Blair, thinking, oh, the country's in such a smooth place. The NHS is doing greatly, because that was the propaganda at the time. Then we discovered, no, it wasn't. Everything was a mess. Rotherham comes to mind as one example. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section. I'm Maya Tusi, and we are the media.